Well, good morning and welcome to the Lebanon Rock Church online worship and message for this Sunday morning, June the 11th, 2023. I'm Pastor Matt Skiles. Thank you for joining with us this morning. We welcome you to our online worship and message as we gather together here online to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and to worship the Lord in spirit and truth and hear the message from God's word. We're going to invite the presence of the Lord in this morning and I invite you to join with me as we open our service in prayer. I ask you to take your own individual burdens and cares and needs to the Lord. And remember your heavenly father knows what you have need of even before you kneel down and pray. So as we open in prayer this morning, join with me. Let's lift our hearts and our voices to the Lord in prayer. Let's take our petitions and our cares and our burdens and our needs to him. And let's ask God's blessing on our service this morning. Join with me as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity that we have to come together and to worship you and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all of our audience that has joined with us here in this online uh, gathering today. We pray that you'll bless our worship in song and worship and praise and bless the ministry and preaching of your word this morning. Father, we lift up our own individual needs to you today. We pray for those that are sick, those that are in the hospital, those that are shut into the nursing homes or those that are just unable to be with us today. We pray for healing and strength, Lord, for with your stripes, we are healed. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you'll minister to those that have material needs, those that are seeking employment, those that have financial needs in their life. Bless them, Father, and provide and meet every need that they have. We pray for our lost loved ones, our family members and friends that are in need of salvation, that are lost spiritually. And Father, we pray for our nation and for our local community. We pray for husbands and wives and children and families. And Father, we pray, Lord, for our nation and the citizens and residents of our nation. Father, we pray that you'll just minister and bless us today, Father, and be with us as we worship now. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, join with me now for a time of worship and song. And following that, I'll be coming back with this morning's message from God's Word.
Praise the Lord and God be praised. If you have your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones, whatever your Bible app is that you're using this morning, I invite you to go with me to the New Testament to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, we're going to be reading verses 1, 2, and 3 as we continue our current message series on standing firm in a hostile culture with message number 3, which is walking with God in the age of apostasy. Walking with God in the age of apostasy. And we're going to focus this morning on this message dealing with the time in the age of apostasy where people are falling away from the truth, falling away from the faith, and listening to the warning that the Apostle Paul gave to Timothy that is very much for the current church and current culture of today. So let's start at 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to begin reading verses 1, 2, and 3. And I hope this message will bless your heart and I hope that it will challenge you to understand the importance of standing firm in faith, but also understanding the need to preach the word of God and to preach the gospel uh, to a lost and a dying world. So let's begin reading 1 Timothy 4, verse number 1, leading all the way down to verse 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And again, our message title this morning is message number three in our current series, Standing Firm in a Hostile Culture, with message number three, Walking with God in an Age of Apostasy. Now, we talk about a lot of times the importance of the church fulfilling the Great Commission. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, Jesus made it very clear to us in the word of God what we are commanded to do. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. There's no gray areas there. There's nothing to be questioned there. The issue is not in doubt because the Lord gave us the command to go and preach the gospel to every creature on the face of this earth. In Matthew 28, we're told to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Jesus said that in the latter verses of Matthew 28, as the book of Matthew was concluded. Those were the last verbal instructions and commands that the Lord gave to his disciples. Of course, they tarried in Jerusalem. 10 days later, the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they began the work of proclaiming the good news, the gospel, of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Apostle Paul desired to know only one thing amongst the early church Christians, and that was Jesus Christ and him crucified. The gospel is still the good news. God's word that we preach and that we teach, this word that I hold in my hand, that we proclaim and that we preach and that we teach, it is still the truth. It is still the word of God. It is still the bread of life. Jesus said in John 16 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth, it is the flesh that profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But somewhere along the line, over the course of the past 2,000 years, the church no longer is proclaiming the truth as it once did. I've been saved and have been a born again Christian for 33 years. I was saved on August the 28th, 1990. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues on November the 4th, 1990. And since that time up to the current day, I have been called to preach and share the gospel. I was called to preach in December of 1990. I began 
ministering and preached my first message in 1991 while I was in college. And I remember teaching and sharing and preaching on the urgency of the coming of the Lord and the scriptures that I shared and the words that I imparted. And when I first came to the Lord way back then, pastors and preachers still preached that sin was sin. They still preached the message of salvation. They still spoke about the eternal hope of heaven. They warned about the eternal judgment and torment of hell. They talked about the coming of the Lord, the importance of prayer, the importance of proclaiming the word of God. And I remember reading in the word of God in Galatians chapter one, verse eight and nine, the words that the apostle Paul said, though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. And Paul goes on and says it again, as we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. There is a curse and a stigma and obviously the judgment of God that comes upon people that do not preach the truth. The Apostle Paul later warned Timothy here in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1, about what would happen in the generation and culture and days before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said in 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Paul is speaking here of an age of apostasy, an age where people turn away from the faith, people turn away from the truth, People turn away from serving God and begin to now try to live in a world that is carnal, that is evil, that is wicked, that is under the control of Satan. And they are turning their back on the God that gave his son to save them. That's the age of the culture with which the church finds itself. We as individual Christians and we as children of God have to hear the words that Paul speaks here in 1 Timothy 4, 1 to 3, because Paul is speaking about the importance of walking, walking with God in an age of apostasy, apostasy, and that's where we find ourselves now. I mentioned earlier some of the words and the messages and thoughts that I heard conveyed when I was a teenager in college going to church after I came to the Lord, and I was brought up in a church that preached the word of God, that taught the word of God. I've always heard the truth preached from the pulpit. I've never heard anything differently. But what breaks my heart and grieves me in my spirit is when I see the church no longer preaching the truth, the compromise with carnality, the watering down of the message, the fear of telling the truth because someone may be offended or someone may leave the church or someone may not want to be rebuked or reproved or corrected. But I'm here to tell you that if people are not willing to be rebuked and if they're not willing to be corrected, then they simply don't want to repent and they simply don't want to convert. They just want someone to cover up their sin and go on. The church is doing that now by allowing sin and iniquity and carnality to pretty much find a resting place in the body of Christ because there's no conviction. There's no truth being preached. Men and women and adults and children and people that come into the church for the most part in 2023 no longer hear the truth so they never have to confront their sinful condition. The church is telling the world what it wants to hear, not telling the world what it needs to hear. And so, I think about some of the things I'm seeing now taking place in the world and it grieves me. I'm reminded of the words of Lynn Robbins who was quoted as saying, lowering the Lord's standards to the level of society's inappropriate behavior is apostasy. I think we can say with a certain amount of clarity that that's true. And John Stott said it so well, the essence of apostasy is changing sides from that which is crucified to the crucifier. And there are deceptions going on all the time in our world. 
There are people that deceive, people that lie, people that cheat, and many people are victimized by the deceit of the world around them. But some of the worst, most treacherous, most deceitful things happening are happening in the church because preachers and teachers and churches are not warning people, not telling the truth, proclaiming the truth, not challenging the body of Christ to walk with God in an age of apostasy. And so what we're going to focus on in this message this morning is that we're living in the last days and we're going to begin to see people fall away from the faith and we're going to talk about why they're falling away from the faith. And it's important that we remember that because that's the day and age that we're living in. And the Lord Jesus Christ warned us in Matthew chapter 24 when he said these words uh, very, very clearly. He that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. We are living in that day and age where it's going to take endurance. It's going to take a strong faith. It's going to take a determined effort. It's going to take... Uh, Christians purposing in their heart to want to serve God and not look to the left hand or to the right, but look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of our faith. We've compromised so much in the church now that some people that have been serving God for a long time and can discern between right and wrong walk into the church and many don't know where the church starts or the world stops and the church starts or where the church stops and the world starts because there's such a tragic mixture now of worldliness and godliness and that just simply doesn't work. It's very difficult for the church to compromise with the world because that leads to apostasy which is what we're seeing today. So let's look here as we unpack the message this morning and begin to impart and convey the points to you. The first point we want to convey this morning when we talk about walking with God in an age of apostasy is point number one, and that is the falling away from the faith. That is what apostasy is in essence. The best way you can describe that. First Timothy 4 chapter 1 again, Paul says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Paul warned Timothy because people will begin to depart from the faith and their hearts will begin to become carnal and evil. The writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 3 and 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. We're living in that day and age where people are beginning to depart and fall away. It's becoming too difficult, too strenuous, too hard, too complicated to be a Christian and serve God. Now, the early church, they had to deal with all kinds of affliction, persecution. Many of them were killed and martyred and gave their lives for the cause of Christ. They were persecuted and treated harshly. The Apostle Paul's entire life was one of persecution and suffering. The early church paid a heavy price to preach and proclaim the gospel. The church of the 21st century cannot even compare itself to the church of the 1st century. The church of the 21st century is more concerned with being comfortable and being prosperous and being accepted by culture instead of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable, preaching the truth and exposing sin and standing up even in the midst of persecution and ostracization and harsh treatment. God is looking for people that will understand the day and age that we're living in and when the rest of the world goes down the slippery slope of evil and sin and wickedness, when we see what postmodernism has done to our culture, when we see what's happening on the school campuses and on the university campuses, when we see what's taking place in Hollywood and in the media, it takes men and women and, and people of God that are strong to stand up and not be led astray and not fall away. Paul said the Spirit speaks expressly that in the last days, latter times, some shall depart from the faith we are seeing that. We all know someone that once was serving God and now is backslid or turned away from God. And they're no longer serving God like they once did. 
And there is something to be said because we live in a world today that is trying to push all different kinds of religions onto uh, the public square and into the current culture. Islam, Hinduism, New Age teachings, all kinds of different things. But the fact is the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the truth. And the world doesn't want to hear it because it is a stumbling block. It is the truth. It offends. It convicts. It troubles people. I remember when Jesus was feeding the 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes, they followed him as he crossed over to the other side and met him there and followed him because they were looking for the material gain of what he could give them. But when Jesus began to explain to them what it's going to cost to follow him, the Bible says many thereafter ceased to follow after him. And Jesus turned to the 12 which were there and he said, will you also go away? You see, the Lord knew that there were people that were following him only because of what he could do for them, what they could attain or get or receive from him. But yet the Lord wants us to serve him faithfully and remain faithful to him. Not because of what he will do for us, but what we should be doing for him, giving him our life, our heart, our soul, our mind, loving him with all that we have. The word of God tells us we need to know this word so that we can be strengthened and that we can grow and that we can stand against the enemy when this uh, time of apostasy grows worse and worse. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And in Romans 10 and 17, it tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We're in that falling away from the faith. So it is more important now than ever that we stay in the word of God and we stay true to the scriptures because the word of God is being compromised. It is being watered down and it is no longer being proclaimed as truth. And that's where we begin to get into this very murky, ugly, uh, very evil area where the church no longer is standing against darkness, no longer proclaiming the truth. That's where we have to stand. Just as I shared last week in my message last week, the Bible tells us have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. We have to stand up and correct and stand against that. You do that with the word of God. Second point this morning that we want to convey to you as we unpack the message, talking about walking with God in an age of apostasy is, is not only... Not only is it important that we stay in the word of God, but this point is, is the reason why, because people are giving heed to seducing spirits. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, Paul says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, that's important to remember because Paul says that there's coming a day when you're going to hear this. This is going to be proclaimed and people are going to start to believe this and they're going to fall victim to the deception and the treachery of false teaching, seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils. You know, the Bible tells us that we're going to see that day and age. In fact, in Paul's second letter to Timothy, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, this is his final warning to Timothy before he signs off on the letter. He says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That speaks of people no longer wanting to hear the truth, 
but a time is coming and it is now here where people are turning to teachers and preachers having itching ears means they they're, they're wanting the, the the teacher or the preacher or someone to tell them what they want to hear make them feel good make it positive don't condemn me don't make me feel guilty don't preach at me don't preach to me encourage me uplift me well the bible tells us here as paul told timothy preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine reprove means to correct rebuke means to discipline and to correct and to speak the truth sometimes harshly reprove rebuke and exhort which means to encourage and strengthen so sometimes we have to correct we have to speak harshly and sometimes we even have to encourage but preaching is a multifaceted work done by preachers and pastors and missionaries and evangelists and apostles and prophets and teaching is the same the bifold ministry consists of individuals that proclaim the truth and speak the truth. Yes, we're called to speak the truth in love, but we have to preach the word because we are seeing a day and age now in the church where the church is not hearing the truth. There's no message of salvation being preached. There's no uh, beautiful, glorious, eternal hope of heaven. There's no warning against the judgment of hell. We are not preaching on the, the, the word of God. We're not preaching the message of the cross. We're not preaching the power of the blood. We're not preaching the second coming of Christ. And the church is beginning to become a shell of itself. Now churches are ordaining gay clergy. They are marrying same-sex couples. One mainline denomination let a drag queen come in and teach its children in its children's church. That is seducing spirits. That is doctrines of devils. And when you do not proclaim the truth and you do not stand for the truth, then you allow Satan to come in and begin to cause confusion. The gospel message is watered down. And now more people are concerned with being entertained than being evangelized. And somewhere along the line, we lost sight of the fact that the truth is proclaimed and the truth sets people free. Instead, people now want to hear something that makes them feel good, that encourages them, that doesn't make them feel guilty. And God forbid a pastor should offend them, or as we used to say in my, my early days as a Christian, step on somebody's toes. In John chapter six, Jesus was teaching his disciples and teaching a crowd and he began to preach and teach. And it's at a certain point in his teaching, Jesus said something that I think every pastor needs to remember when we preach and teach the word of God. Jesus didn't care who he was talking to. He did not care who was listening. Jesus was simply preaching the truth. In John chapter six and verse number 60 and 61, Jesus is teaching. He's talking about the importance of a kingdom. He's talking about the importance of of following him, serving him. Every time Jesus spoke, it was, it was hard for some people to digest and to comprehend and to understand. Even his disciples didn't always understand his parables. And after Jesus is speaking about many things in John chapter six and verse number 60, it says, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying who can hear it? Verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, doth this offend you? Jesus asked a question in John 6 and 61. Does this offend you? I want you to imagine Jesus preaching in 2023 and teaching to a large crowd of people. 
And as he's teaching and preaching, people are getting antsy. They're getting offended. They're getting nervous. They're murmuring. They're texting on their cell phones. They're telling their neighbors or their friends or their family, can you believe this guy? Can you believe what he's saying? And then all of a sudden, Jesus stops and looks at a group of people and says, do you have a problem with what I'm saying? Does this bother you? Does this offend you? Because that's what Jesus was saying to them in a lack of, for a better way of saying it, does this offend you? He's saying, do you have a problem with what I just said? Jesus did not care who listened to him. He did care that he preached the truth. He did nothing but what his Father in heaven told him to do, and he preached the word of God. We as Christians must understand that's the day and age we're living in, because Paul warned us in 2, Timothy, or 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. He said, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You see, a lot of people are being led astray, being seduced into believing a lot of doctrines that do not line up with the Word of God. If you're in a church that doesn't preach the cross, get out of it. If you're in a church that doesn't preach salvation, get out of it. If you're in a church that doesn't preach the power of the blood, that doesn't preach the second coming of Christ, that doesn't warn against the judgment of hell, doesn't proclaim the eternal hope of glory that is found in heaven, if it doesn't preach the word of God, then for, the, for your own sake and salvation, get out. You see, the Bible tells us in Psalm 119, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The psalmist also said in Psalm 119, where shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed unto thy word. God's word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We are walking in a dark and evil world. And there is no way we're going to get through this darkness without the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the word of God showing us the way. We are living in a day and age where the church is now embracing gender identity, is now, is now affirming homosexuality, is now affirming transgender ideology. And any church that thinks the rainbow stands for LGBTQ equality has lost it. The rainbow is God's promise to Noah in the book of Genesis that he would never destroy the earth by a flood ever again. You see, I don't want to get so keyed up and worked up when I say this, but the word of God is the truth. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. And we are in that day and age where people are giving heed to seducing spirits. And that leads us to our third point we want to impart today, and that is this, the doctrines of devils. If we're going to walk with God in an age of apostasy, we have to understand that there are doctrines of devils out there, and we have to be very careful about what we hear, what we put into our spirit. Again, 1 Timothy 4, and chapter number uh, 4, verse uh, number, number uh, 2, Verse 1 and 2 and 3 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. We are in a day and age now where people don't even think what they're doing is wrong. When your conscience is seared with a hot iron, you can no longer be convicted or moved by the Holy Spirit. It's convicting power doesn't reprove or convict us, which then leads us down the pathway of a reprobate mind. And when we get to that point, we're almost past the point of no return where we will blaspheme the Holy Ghost. Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and verse 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. We are in a day and age now where the church is being bombarded 
by men and women on YouTube and Rumble and, and all other kinds of video uh, platforms that are prophesying about things that quite frankly have never happened. And when these people do that, it causes confusion, it causes problems and confusion and leads many people astray. I wonder how many people tune in to these charlatans and listen to these people and believe what they say. There are false Christs, false prophets, false teachers, just as the Lord warned us, and they are proclaiming doctrines of devils. Satan is the liar and the father of all lies. And any, 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 any preacher, teacher, church, parachurch organization, ministry, outreach, whatever, that adds to the word of God or takes away from the word of God or has some new revelation that they tell you that is only theirs and that it's something new, don't believe it. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, if it isn't within the confines of the word of God, don't give an ear to that. It's a doctrine of the devil. You wonder how people could be so blind in 1993 as to just allow themselves to be killed in the horrible, horrific, tragic uh, uh, ending to the Branch Davidians in Waco, Texas. Mass suicide, taking the lives of innocent, innocent people, innocent children, because they believe the lives of some spiritual charlatan that was probably demon-possessed and led them to their destruction and their death. What makes people drink poison Kool-Aid and allow themselves to be killed because they're listening to a lunatic named Jim Jones who tells them, follow me to Guyana and we'll have a Christian utopia and no one will bother us. That man was a charlatan preaching a doctrine of devils. We wonder why people join cults and people are led astray to believe things because they're not in the word of God. We are living in that day and age. Many Christians are being led astray because they want to believe so badly that someone is right, that they'll be seduced, led astray, and believe a doctrine of the devil. You see, even the very elect can be deceived. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 and 19, the apostle John writes, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not all of us. John was saying, there's evil people out there. There's false Christ. There's antichrist out there. Already there's false Christ out there. And you know we're living in that day and age. And they were once with us, but they were then cast out from us because John says if they had followed our teaching, if they had done what we had been teaching and preaching, they would still be a part of the body of Christ, but they are not. They went out so that they can be uh, manifested for the false teachers and the charlatans and the flakes that they are. I thank God every day that I grew up in a church and came to Christ in a church that preached the truth, that, that, that tells the truth. You see, the Bible makes it very, very clear that, that this is the truth that sets people free. You can't change it. You can't alter it. You can't try to disprove it. It's the word of God. And some people will cynically try, and some people will sarcastically try to say things about the word of God. There's many atheists out there, many agnostics out there, many people that don't believe. But there's a day coming when we're all going to stand before God. Philippians chapter 2 makes it very, very clear. You read verses 5 through 10, and it says, that God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That is truer than true. And the day will come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. The very reason why our culture is so mis messed up and mixed up is because we're in an age of apostasy when the truth is not being preached. Just this past week, 
the body of Christ lost another uh, lost another well-known member of the body of Christ Pat Robertson passed away and went home to be with the Lord maybe you agreed with Pat Robertson maybe you didn't but Pat Robertson lived his life and preached the word and served God like Dr. Charles Stanley who died who died as well and and like some of the other people of God that have served God, that have been faithful. When these older saints of God pass away, that voice is silenced. But the truth still must be preached. I know that Pat Robertson always stood for truth, just like Charles Stanley always preached the truth. I didn't always agree with what I heard from brother Pat Robinson and sometimes I didn't agree with Dr. Charles Stanley but I respected them because they preached the word maybe their interpretation was a little different than mine but I respected them because they preached the word the church has to preach the word if we're going to walk with God in an age of apostasy we have to stay true to the word of God we have to be people of the book and we have to follow Christ so let's stand for the Lord in this age of apostasy and let's walk with God in this age of apostasy. And we are going to make an impact in these last days. Praise God. That concludes our message. So join with me now as we close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the message from your word that we've heard today. Father, help us to walk with you in this age that we're living in. It is an age of apostasy where people are falling away. People are turning their back. People are no longer serving you. Father, I pray that you'll help us to stand for truth and to stand for righteousness in this day and hour that we live. Father, we need you to once again reveal yourself through the word of God and send revival and send a great spiritual awakening to this nation and to our world. Father, we pray for every pastor, every teacher, every church in the United States of America. Father, if there's pastors, preachers, teachers, churches that are not preaching the truth, then Lord, get a hold of their hearts and restore them to that place where they'll not only repent and be restored, but they'll proclaim the truth. And Father, if they will not preach the truth, then Lord, bring that ministry, that minister, that individual, bring that ministry down to naught. For Lord, you're going to curse everything that isn't in line with your word. And Father, we pray that you'll bless us now. Father, we ask that you'll help the church to stand for truth. Lord, give us a good week this week. And Father, as we prepare to go to this next week of our lives, we pray that you'll be with us, watch over us, prosper us and keep us in health, even as our soul prospers. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining with me today. And thank you for being a part of uh, this online worship and message. Join us next Sunday as we preach a very special Father's Day message for all of our dads out there. I encourage you to remember your fathers this week. Uh, be sure that you honor them. Be sure that you tell them you love them. And if your father is deceased and passed away, I pray that you'll be able to honor him in some way and uh, hope the memories are good that you have. But from all of us here at Lebanon Rock Church, we say God bless you. Thank you for being with us. Have a wonderful week, and we'll look forward to having you back with us next time.